Welcome everyone on this feast of the baptism of the Lord. Our opening hymn is On Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry announces that the Lord is nigh. On Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry announces that the Lord In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, my sisters and brothers, let's prepare ourselves by calling to mind our sins, and calling to mind God's promise of forgiveness. Kyrie, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie eleison. Christe, Christe eleison. Christe, Christe eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let's celebrate our forgiveness. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father, glory to God, Glory to God, glory to the Father, to him be glory forever, to him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to Christ Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to Christ Jesus. To him be glory forever, to him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To Him be glory forever, to him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Let us pray. 
almighty and eternal God. When the Spirit descended upon Jesus at his baptism in the Jordan, you revealed him as your own beloved Son. He bursts your children, born of water and the Spirit, faithful to our calling. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. first reading is from the prophet Isaiah and he prophesies here about the servant of God that we now know was Jesus and he says that great servant of God will be in the sight of the world quiet unassuming and ordinary but full of forgiveness and healing thus says the Lord here is my servant whom I behold, my chosen one, in whom my soul delights. I have endowed him with my spirit, that he may bring true justice to the nations. He does not cry out or shout aloud, or make his voice heard in the streets. He does not break the crushed reed, nor quench the wavering flame. Faithfully, he brings true justice. He will neither waver nor be crushed until true justice is established on earth, for the islands are awaiting his Lord. I, the Lord, have called you to serve the cause of right. I have taken you by the hand and formed you. I have appointed you as covenant of the people and light of the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to free captives from prison, and those who live in darkness from the dungeon. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to each verse of the psalm is, The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord the will Lord bless, bless his, his people, people with peace. peace. O oh, give the Lord, you sons of God, give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Adore the Lord in his holy court. The, the Lord, Lord will bless his people, people with peace. With peace. The Lord's voice resounding on the waters, the Lord on the immensity of waters. The voice of the Lord full of power, the voice of the Lord full of splendour. The, the Lord will bless his people with peace. The, the God of glory thunders, in his temple they all cry glory. The Lord sat enthroned over the flood, the Lord sits as king for ever. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The second reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. This reading is from the very early history, the very early days of the church, the very early days of the Christian movement and the living of the gospel in the world. And Cornelius has been not even a Jew, but a pagan, but he's a Roman. He too, and to all pagans in the world, the gospel is addressed. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. The truth I have come to realize, he said, is that God does not have favorites, but that anybody of any nationality who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. It is true God sent his word to the people of Israel, and it was to them that the good news of peace was brought by Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is Lord of all men. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. And because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us acclaim the gospel. Alleluia! And 
with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. A feeling of expectancy had grown among the people who were beginning to think that John might be the Christ. So John declared before them all, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to undo the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, when all the people had been baptized, and while Jesus, after his own baptism, was at prayer, heaven opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily shape, like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. My favour rests on you. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. John the Baptist baptised with water. And the way he speaks of it, it's always as if he's saying, I baptise you only with water. As if there was something lacking about the baptism that he was giving to the people. As if it was only a symbol. Because don't forget, there's a great contrast in the Gospels often between water and wine. The water is changed into wine at the marriage feast of Cana because wine represents something more than ordinary, everyday water. And I think it's the same here. John the Baptist is saying, in other words, I only baptise you with water and you think I'm great, you think I'm the Messiah, you think I'm the servant of God? Oh no, I'm not the servant of God that Isaiah was speaking of. Because someone's coming, someone who's coming who is more powerful than I am. And I'm not even fit to undo his shoelaces. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now there's the huge contrast between water and the Holy Spirit and fire. Yes, we use water still when we baptize people into new life, when we baptize people into the gospel, when we baptize people into the faith, this new relationship with God. But it's as a remembrance not so much of John's baptism as to how baptism was transformed through our Lord's baptism, into this new baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. That's why we still use the symbolism, not just of water, but fire, when we baptise someone. We normally, in normal times, have the Easter candle burning, representing the light, the life, and the truth of Christ through fire. We present the child, or his godparents, if he's too young to hold it for himself, with the gift of a candle that's been kindled from the Easter candle. Fire! Representing so much more. In, in some circumstances, fire is the opposite of water. It's hot. It burns. It's full of brightness and light. My heart burns with love. I burn with feeling all these ancient images of love, fire, and the Holy Spirit. I baptize you with the Holy Spirit, the second person of the Holy Trinity, who is a gift and brings his gift throughout our lives after baptism. All these things, as in so often with our great feasts, all these things are compressed into a few lines and into a few thoughts. But there is such richness here. Don't forget the overall theme of the Christmas season, which we're coming to an end of here. The overall theme of God becoming one of us. It's emphasizing that he's one of us 
by our Lord himself submitting to baptism. It was sometimes said in the past, and I can still remember at school, but miss, why did our Lord need to be baptised if he had no sin? Well, actually, the forgiveness of sins isn't the first important thing about baptism. The most important thing about baptism is becoming members of Christ's body, members of this new gospel life. Forgiveness of sins comes about as a secondary consequence of that. It's not meant to be our main focus. The main focus of baptism is inclusion. He became one of us. And so to emphasize that point, submitted himself to baptism, to emphasize again and again, I am one of you. I am with you. I am united with you in pain, in suffering, and in joy, and in worry, and in satisfaction, and every other experience of human life apart from sin. And remember again, not to be superstitious about the nature of sin. Sin is not breaking rules. Sin is not breaking laws. Sin is distancing ourselves from God. And the only difference between him and us is that he has never distanced himself. And he calls us to this state of being through grace. Because when we live the gospel, we become ever, ever closer and closer to him and less and less liable to distance ourselves, less and less liable to sin. And the state of heaven, which we talk about so much, is simple. It's being in God's presence in eternity and through eternity. And that's the state our Lord has been in always. And amazingly and gobsmackingly, it's a state that he calls us to for eternity. Let us proclaim our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth, earth and, in and in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's turn to the Father with our needs, the needs of the world, and the needs of our communities. Let's pray first for those suffering or threatened by infection of the Omicron variant of the coronavirus, that the Lord will protect their lives, that the Lord will ease their sufferings, that the Lord will strengthen and give courage and heart to those charged with caring for them, especially the doctors, the nurses, ambulance staff, support staff, cleaners, cooks, who work so hard and are often forgotten about in our hospitals. Lord, give them peace and joy in their vital work. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, us. hear us. Let's pray for peace and lack of violence and threat of violence in several states of the former USSR, Kazakhstan, and the Ukraine. Things are looking very unresolved and dangerous there. Let's pray that men may refrain from violence, refrain from inflicting their control on others. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let's pray for those people who will soon be baptised. Youngsters, children in arms, but also many adult converts to Christianity. That like the Lord themselves, they will receive the gift of fire, the gift of the Spirit, so that they may live the gospel and through the way they live their lives, bring others too to become part of God's body. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. As we begin the new year, let's pray that it will mark new beginnings in many ways as we begin to come to an end from spring and summer of the years of Corona, that the lessons we've learnt of generosity, forgiveness, care, and the perspective of what's truly important in life may be well remembered and lived out as, please God, we continue with the rest of our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear, hear us. us. We've learnt in today's Gospels how this news of God's closeness to mankind and becoming one of us is no longer just for the chosen people of Israel, but for all nations. Let's hear especially in those nations where the message of the gospel is suppressed in any way, that there too men's ears may be open and the eyes of the blind may be made to see. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. Let's pray for our dead, especially those who've died recently, that they may see God face to face and that one day we may all be reunited in his house of many rooms. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious in hear us. us. Let's turn to Our Lady and ask her to add her prayers to ours as we pray for peace in many ways, in people's hearts, in political attitudes, and in our attitude towards each other. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my many iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. Let's pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Lord, we celebrate the revelation of Christ your Son, who takes away the sins of the world. Accept our gifts and let them become one with his sacrifice, for he is Lord for ever and ever. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. You celebrated your new gift of baptism by signs and wonders at the Jordan. Your voice was heard from heaven to awaken faith in the presence among us of the Word made flesh. Your spirit was seen as a dove, revealing Jesus as your servant and anointing him with joy as the Christ, sent to bring to the poor the good news of salvation. In our unending joy, we echo on earth the song of the angels in heaven as they praise your glory forever. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the to be glorified, O God. For you love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we're gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And so, most loving and holy Father, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine. That they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more he gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, most loving and holy Father, 
as we celebrate this memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and unto the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Malcolm our Bishop, and all your priestly people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Paul of the Cross, St. Joseph and all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have his encouragement to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day, so that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's give each other a sign of his peace. Lamb of God, we take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us pray. Lord, you feed us with bread from heaven. May we hear your word with faith and become your children in name and in fact. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless and protect you and bring you through this affliction safely and with joy. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn is God's Spirit is in my heart. God's Spirit is in my heart. He has called me and set me apart. This is what I have to do. What I have to do. He sent me to give the good news to the poor. Tell prisoners that they are prisoners no more. Tell blind people that they can see. And set the downtrodden free. Oh